It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. And to kick off this tale of two cities, I'm flying British Airways economy, i.e. world traveler, on the Airbus A380 from Chicago to London. I've been very critical of British Airways business class club world before, so perhaps you expect me to lambast them again. But I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to disappoint you. I actually enjoyed this flight. But I think your experience will really depend on where you sit on the plane. British Airways has economy on both decks. On the lower deck, it's in a 3-4-3 layout. But on the upper deck, there's a small economy cabin in the back with a 2-4-2 layout. Having two seats in a row in economy is all but unheard of these days, so I highly recommend getting a seat there. Unfortunately, unless you are lucky, it's gonna cost you. I ridiculed British Airways for charging me £110 to select a seat in business class, which is ludicrous. I was not prepared for it to be just as bad in economy. It was $64 to $98 to select a window seat on the lower deck. $116 on the upper deck, and even $56 to $91 to select a middle seat. This is crazy for a family of four to sit together round trip. That's what, $800? On my ticket booked through Iberia, I could select non-premium window seats on American for free, and in the past, even on their basic economy tickets, I only paid like 14 bucks. I checked in exactly 24 hours beforehand, and look at that, a window seat on the upper deck all the way in the back. Truly lucked out there, or my travel agent pulled some strings. Perhaps this trip won't be so bad after all. I arrived in the early afternoon at O'Hare Terminal 5, which is undergoing a major renovation, to the point it's nearly unrecognizable. Some of the gates now have this beautiful new layout, and my A380 was parked right next to a bunch of the southwest gates, which are so much nicer than what was there before. But look at this gate area. Does this look like it's large enough with enough seats for an A380? We'll see what happens. Historically, Terminal 5 has had terrible food options, but lucky for me, it's improved, and now there's a tortoise. Hooray! But they were either terribly understaffed or had just opened and needed to iron out the kinks. You had to order at the bar for some reason, and this crew would be completely incapable of dealing with real demand. It took forever. It also wasn't as good as the sandwich wasn't toasted for long enough. In my last video discussing Terminal 5, I expressed doubts about the capacity of the Priority Pass lounges there. Flashback. There's no way that when travel resumes you'll be able to get into these lounges. Overcrowding was already an issue for years. End of flashback. Well, the Air France lounge has since left Priority Pass, so now there's just one lounge, the Swiss Port Lounge. And what do you know? There's a permanent sign out front saying they are full. I tried asking nicely, but no. No admittance. I made my way to the boarding area, and yeah, as I thought, it turned into a real mess. Additionally, the gate staff said that they would not be able to board anyone with mobile boarding passes or even those printed at home. Everyone had to come to the desk and be issued a paper one. Uh, wh why? Technology people. Boarding was done by zone and by deck, and I was one of the last to board on the upper deck. Business class is the horrific 232 on the upper deck that I just reviewed, but it's an even worse 242 on the main deck. There's a very small premium economy section that's 232 that looked just fine. One of the main selling points of premium economy is the two seats together, which, hey, I was able to get back in economy. I arrived at the economy cabin in the rear of the aircraft, but was immediately confronted by the lack of overhead bin space, even when I was one of the first to arrive. I ended up having to put my rollerboard in premium economy. The seats were actually pretty comfortable. While they look a bit dated, that means there's real padding and not the slimline enhancements of other airlines. The headrests were good but didn't fold, and there was a pillow and a blanket. There sadly are no individual air nozzles, and I did get a bit toasty at times. The problem with the legroom are these older entertainment boxes that get in the way. The person in the aisle really gets screwed. But another advantage for the window is there's a bit of extra space by the window, and I was able to manspread to my heart's content. 
there's an in-seat entertainment screen with the same dated moving map in business class, and there's USB and full power. I overheard the people sitting in the middle section, and they were very impressed by the seats, saying how much more comfortable they were compared with American Airlines. And I don't even find Americans' long-haul seats that bad. Still, thought it was worth including, so you don't think it's just me hating on American. Boarding was complete 10 minutes prior to departure, but we were delayed due to baggage loading. The crew performed a manual safety demonstration. Again, I don't know why we all have screens and BA has a great safety video. Perhaps someone can explain it to me. We took off 30 minutes late. Flying time was 6 hours and 55 minutes at 39,000 feet. For the drink service, I was offered not one, but two mini bottles of wine, which seems a bit excessive. Later with the meal, people were offered another two bottles, but that's more than enough booze for me for one night. For the meal, there was a choice of chicken or pasta. British Airways uses Doe & Co, one of, if not the best airline caterers in the world, who also provides food to Austrian and Turkish airlines. I had high hopes for the food, but how good can an economy meal really be? Pretty decent, actually. There was a cup of quinoa and peppers that was quite good. A roll, butter, cheese, crackers, and the entree. The pasta itself was only all right, just a bit bland. But for an economy pasta dish, it was more than acceptable. The chocolate mousse was really good. On the whole, for economy food, I dare say British Airways is pretty high up there. They've also switched to using compostable silverware, which is nice. With my melatonin and Turkish eye shades, I slept off and on for a few hours. Breakfast was offered just before Ireland. Breakfast was an Egg McMuffin. It was fine. Not amazing, but fine. At least there was a hot offering looking at you, United. My interactions with the crew was limited, but they were very friendly with the meal service and definitely not stingy with the wine. We began our descent over Wales. Had a view of the southern coast of England, before flying low right over London as the sun rose. So British Airways economy on the A380 upper deck. You know what? It was actually pretty great. The seat was comfortable, the food surprisingly good for economy, and the whole thing from beginning to end, other than boarding, went without a hitch. I've recently reviewed United and Air France economy across the Atlantic, and I've got a date with American on the way back. British Airways was absolutely in line with the others, if not towards the front of the pack. So yes, see, I can be honest and complimentary but that still doesn't excuse the nickel and diming on the seats. But that's just their low-cost owners running the airline, just like Vueling. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click that button and please subscribe for many more flight reviews to come. I'll see you next time as we compare the Heathrow Express to the new Elizabeth line to see what's the best way of getting from Heathrow to the city of London.